Welcome back guys. I am filming this on a Friday, so happy Friday. Um, I'm going to continue our series of ECU Tune deep dives, and today it's going to be for the 2013 through 16 Genesis Coop 3.8. Before we get started, I will really appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't done so yet so that you're notified every time I put up a new video. So we'll get right to it today and let's go check out the website. Here we are at www.shopbtr.com. If you have not put this in your favorites yet, please do so because we have basically everything you need under the sun in order to make your genesis coupe dreams come true from exterior interior wheels suspension ecu tunes turbo kits etc etc if you think about it we will have it all right so let's get started genesis coupe parts and we're gonna go into 3.8 gdi 2013 through 2016 ecu tune So there's going to be three different ECU tunes here, plus a TCU tune. Um, today I'm going to focus on talking about the Cantoon ECU portion of things. And I will mention what goes on with the TCU as well, because it relates to uh, both tunes. All right. If you want to find out the difference between the Cantoon custom tune and the show mode tune, I will post up a link up top on the left top corner over there, uh, which will direct you to another video that tells you about the differences of the three tunes. But let's get started with the Cantoon ECU service. So as the name suggests, this is a service. So this is where you send in your ECU and we flash your ECU and send it back out to you. Okay, so this basically, it's very easy. So all you have to do is select the year that you want. So today we're talking about BK2. So we're going to be between 13 and 16, 3.8 GDI engine. You pick the transmission you have, manual or automatic. Okay. Manual means full-time manual. You actually have a clutch pedal. Automatic, I know some of you are going to say, you know, I have a manual mode and I can shift on my own, but it is still on automatic if you have a, a gear that's called drive. Okay, So make sure you select the right one. If you select the wrong one, you could mess up the whole tune. So let's go with that. As for octane level, this is very important. I want to go over this in detail. That way you don't make a mistake when you're selecting the octane level. One, we cannot run 87 or 89 octane on a tune. Uh, the reason being, we're not able to advance timing. We're not able to uh, lean out the fuel mixture to actually get that extra horsepower that you want from a, an ECU tune. Because the 87 or 88 octane does not have enough headroom for us to actually increase those values. Um, if you pump low octane fuel like those um there is a higher chance of detonation and actually damaging your engine with the tune um that's why we require either a 91 or 93 octane fuel to be used in the car now depending on the state depending on the city you live in what's available close to you may differ so i know in california for example that whole state all the all you can get is 91 octane they don't they don't have 93 octane period so at that point you would choose 91 octane tune and pump 91 every time you're at the gas pump now if you're in chicagoland like we are um, 93 octane is very abundant up here um, so you you can definitely choose the 93 octane tune and get the tune done for it because the 93 octane tune will output slightly more power than the 91 octane tune just because of the extra octane level it has we can advance timing a little further okay with that said you're not looking at a huge difference in power but there is definitely a difference now with that 91 and 93 it kind of clears that up but what if what if you travel outside of your state or your city very often in your car um, the problem comes when you have a 93 octane tune and you decide to travel um, across state lines and that particular state only has 91 because whatever you're tuned for you can pump whatever you're tuned for or higher so if you're tuned for 91 you can pump 91 you can pump 93 you can pump 95 whatever but if you're tuned for 93 and you pump 91 
it will detonate. It's just the way it is, okay? So if you travel outside of your state quite often, um, you know for a fact your car is taking on a lot of road trips, my suggestion would be to suffer the loss a little bit and get the 91 tune. And when you're around town, pump 93. And if you're going out of town, you don't have to worry about, you know, not having access to 93. You can pump 91 and be okay. All right. So that's the part that I really wanted to go over because a lot of people don't understand the octane level differences and why it's required in certain um, variations. Okay. Let's move on to pop and bang option. So pop and bang option. The way this works, I actually have a video that I will link above that will tell you the mechanics of how this works, how the software is manipulated to make the pops and bangs and the burble happen. Um, but short, in long story short, what pops and bangs does for the option is it creates burbling, it creates pops and bangs, just like the name suggests, during deceleration. So if you are driving and let's say you're, you accelerate up to 6,500 RPMs, and then you let off the throttle, and as the RPMs come down, you're going to hear backfiring, popping, and banging. Um, that's what the pop and bang option is. However, pop and bang only happens down until about 3,000 RPMs. Below that, pop and bang will not happen. That's just how we have it programmed. That way, when you're actually driving around town, let's say you're pulling into your neighborhood at 3 in the morning, you don't want to be popping and banging in and you know waking up your neighbors or even making your neighbors think there's a gunfire outside. Um, so if you keep your RPMs below 3,000 RPMs, you will cruise in as if you know there's nothing going on. So that's the part that you want to pay attention to. Also, when you're during decel, when you, when it's coming down from 6,000 to 3,000 RPMs or 7,000 to 3,000 RPMs, if you want it to be more obnoxious with it. You can actually put your foot on the throttle very lightly and it will create even more obnoxious backfires. So that's something that you can play around with and have fun with as well. Now, the sound, um, the frequency of how, how it happens, it does vary from car to car. It also varies depending on what kind of exhaust systems you have. So an exhaust system that's header back obviously is going to have more louder obnoxious pops than something that is nearly stock. And on stock exhaust, you may not even hear it just because it's not loud enough. Okay. Now, moving on to launch control. Launch control wise, we offer three different RPMs, 3,500, 4,000, and 4,500 RPMs. So on an NA car launch control, is it really needed? Not really, because you can just use your foot on the throttle to control whatever RPM you want to drop the car at. Because it's not like you're trying to pre-spool the turbo or anything like that. However, it is still cool to have this going because when you actually peg your launch control at the certain rpm level that you choose you're going to get all sorts of backfiring and you know it's just going to sound cool all right so 35 4000 4500 you choose whatever you want now this obviously works with manuals best because on automatics it just becomes a noise maker um on automatics it only works in park and neutral and you can't engage it while in drive so there's technically no launching capability of it but you will still get the cool backfiring, um, bouncing off the rev limiter type of thing um, when you do the launch control on the autos as well. Okay. Now this lat next part is very, very important that you actually get this completely correct, 100% right. The reason being, this determines the immobilizer status of your car. So key start US models do not have immobilizers, meaning you can actually swap a key start ECU from a, another car and have your car function the same. Okay. But for the key start Canadian model, key start Puerto Rican model, and the push button stars, they have what's called immobilizers, meaning it has a certain key or a certain code that has to match with your key, that has to match with your ECU, that also has to match with your body control module. So there are three things that needs to all have the same exact coding for it to actually check every time you try to start the car and it needs to check all three of them before it fires it up okay so we need to know exactly what you have that way we don't program it wrong and you have issues with car not starting once you get the ecu back so make sure you double and triple check this when you make your purchase for the ecu okay and now this last part we have a pre-tuned ECU option. What does this mean? Pre-tuned ECU. We're charging you extra $450 for it. What could it mean? It means you do not have to send your ECU in. As long as you give us 
the right information here, especially your immobilizer information, we're able to make a whole new ECU for you. That way you can keep your stock ECU untuned. Now, why would you want to do this? So a couple of reasons why you want to do this if you want to, if you have the extra money to spend. Is one, you will have no downtime since you don't have to send the ECU into us. Okay. Two, you will always have an OEM ECU to go back to in case you need to troubleshoot something and you need to rule out the ECU tune being the problem. Okay. So then you always have an OEM ECU you can go back. And if the problem itself still repeats with the OEM ECU, you know it's a hardware related problem, not a tune related problem. And three, we're going to go back up to where the octane level was. Let's say you're tuned for 93 octane, but you decide to travel outside of your state. Now you can actually put in the stock ECU and pump 87, 91, whatever it needs to be pumped, and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about detonation or anything like that. All right? So that's where, you're, that's where everything comes into play. Um, that's why we have this option. However, one thing that I do want to note, is normally when when you send in your ECU, the processing time is usually two to three business days. So once we receive the ECU, it takes two to three business days for us to program, um, box it back up, and send it back out to you. Whereas in a pre-tuned ECU option, we have to source out the correct ECU for you depending on what model of immobilizer system you have. So if you have a key start, we have to key start manual. We have to find a key start manual ECU program it and send it out to you if you push button start um automatic we need to find an automatic push button start ecu uh programming and send it out to you so with that said we do take extra time trying to find these ecus at times so we, it could be one to two weeks or it could be two to three weeks okay so the timeline could extend quite a bit longer by going with a pre-tuned ecu option but again your car is not down while the ecu is being sent out so it's a little bit easier to wait for it um than having your car down waiting for ecu to come back so that's why there's that option for you okay so that covers pretty much everything here all the basic options that you have um this particular ecu tune will work from the cars that are completely stock all the way to full bolt-ons um so you can have intake exhaust um, intake manifold spacer etc only thing that i've seen some some issues with in certain point of times is when people do um throttle body port and polish um, 99% of the time, you're not going to have any issues. However, there were certain, certain times in the past where the throttle body actually caused problems. However, here's this. If the throttle body is not causing a problem on your OEM tune, it's not going to cause a problem with an ECU tune. If your throttle body is causing an issue with your OEM ECU, then there is a big likelihood of it causing the same issue with the tuned ECU. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right. Let's move on to the dyno sheets, and I will show you what kind of um, results you can actually expect once you have your ECU tune done, all right? All right, so here we are. This is a dynograph of a BK2 3.8 automatic. Um, this particular car came to us with just intake and catbag exhaust, so nothing extensive. So it ended up dynoing with the stock ECU at 265 wheel horsepower and 237 wheel torque. If you notice, there's a huge drop in power compared to what the OEM rating is on the BK2s for the engine horsepower. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, but I mean, we're just looking at the actual gains of it more than anything. So. Uh, with an ECU tune on this particular car, it ended up doing 272 wheel horsepower and 254 foot-pounds of torque. Um, there is actually, um, that's just the peak numbers. There's actually a huge torque gain. If you look over here, the red part here where the torque starts out versus the blue part here where the new torque starts out, there is almost like a 40 torque gain that starts off right here. And then throughout the whole power band, all the way up to red line, um, to the where to the point where the transmission shifts, there's a there is a continuous um, increase of power. So it, this is a, definitely a huge gain, um, especially with that extra torque you get in the low and the mid range. So you're gonna feel that, you know, at the seat of your pants type of thing. Um, and this is about uh, on average of what you can expect out of the tunes uh, once you throw it in the car. Okay. Now let's take a look at the manuals. So this is a manual version. Now with the manual, 
it does dyno a lot higher and this particular manual that where, where we did the dyno on here was a full bolt-on so it had intake headers uh down pipes you know full cap back and everything and this ended up dynoing with oem ecu at 305 at the wheels and 271 foot pounds of torque which was quite high and it was very surprising to us that it did so well and even then when we did the tune we were able to gain even more significantly amounts so if you look at it you're looking at going from 305 wheel horsepower to 316.89 wheel horsepower so that's almost like an 11 wheel horsepower gain at the peak level again of course and then the torque number went up from 271 to 283 so that's like a 12 wheel torque gain that you're seeing there as well and then another thing just like the automatics um you have power gain throughout the whole power band and even in the mid-range you see how much of a power gain we have instead of the dip it's nice and flat instead of a dip here it's nice and flat so you got consistent power from low rpm all the way to high rpms also if you check it out here let me move myself that you can see the rpms stock rpms um you're redlining at about 6700 rpms okay that's where it cuts off oem wise now with an ecu tune we bring you all the way out to 7200 rpms the reason we do this um if you notice the power does decrease after the oem redline but we do this that way when you shift you're into the actual power band the the best power band that you could possibly be in every time you shift and the rpm goes up and down up and down every time you shift okay Whereas in here, now you have to build it back up and then drop, build it back up and drop. If you're shifting here, you're literally right where the power is being made the whole time while you're driving down that dra drag strip, okay? So that's what that comes into play. Now, this is where I'm going to mention the TCU tune for the 3.8 BK2s. This is actually available only for the BK2 3.8. So let me pull this up here. So the TCU tune, you'll have to select 3.8, and you can either send yours in, or we can make you a pre-tuned TCU as well, just like we do with the ECUs. There are two stages. Stage one increases shift points, so you can rev out higher, like the manuals. So that basically goes back to this graph. See how the manual we increase the red line. Now we can do that with the automatic BK2s and give you the same benefit, where if you look at the automatic graph, it ends here. So instead of there, we can extend that out to here. That way, when it shifts, you're at the top of your power band, just like the manuals would be. Okay? So that's what there comes into play. Um, with the TCU tune, if you go with the stage two, um, it also adds faster shifting times. So um, the automatics are torque converter automatics, so they can only be so fast. However, with programming, we're able to um, actually increase line pressure so it shifts a lot quicker than what is programmed from factory, okay? Um, it does actually drive normal when you leave it in drive. However, when you put it in manual mode, in both stage one and stage two, it disables auto upshift. What does this mean? This means when you're actually at the track and you're trying to corner and you're trying to hold the gear in high RPMs, you can do so. You can bounce it off the red line just like uh, manuals can. So you have all the functions of a manual gearbox in your auto, which you can slap right back into drive when you're driving home after a track day. So that's where the TCU tune comes into play. Okay. Um, I hope that answers all the questions for you, the different options that we have for the 3.8. Um, this is a really, really good investment, especially the amount of power you get. It kind of brings together all your bolt-ons and maximizes what you have so this is definitely recommended for you um, if you haven't done so yet please like and subscribe and if you have any questions or comments definitely comment below and i will see you on the next one peace yeah.